All right, welcome back, folks. Now we're going to look at another angle of abstraction, that of numbers. So number bases, this is a couple of facts that just you should know. Um, number bases are often used to reason about digital data. The first number base we're going to see in this course is, aside from decimal, obviously, is binary. And binary means that we have a 0 and a 1. We only have two options. The next we use is hexadecimal. And hexadecimal means that we're going to have 16 different values. And we're going to see how to do that in a, in a slide or two. Um, and sometimes different bases actually do help about reasoning about them, about digital data. The picture on the right is a picture, but it's encoded in zeros and ones. And the location of that in the array shows you, can you see what it is? Yeah, it's a smile. So that smiley face I just hacked together in PowerPoint is an example of how you can store information in digital data. So you're all familiar with base 10 decimals. You have 10 digits, 0 through 9. And the example of a number is 3271. So 3271, what that really means, this is what you've learned when you were in kindergarten, is 3 is in the thousandth place, 2 is in the hundredth place, 7 is in the tens place, and 1 is in the ones place. Okay, and what that really means mathematically is it's 3 times the base to the power, 10 to the 3. 10 to the 3 is the thousandth. The reason it's 3,000 is, and by the way, another way to add this together is 3,000 plus 200 plus 70 plus 1, because each of those terms adds to those things. So it's really the coefficient times the base to the power, and that power then changes, the, the exponent changes as you go down. Okay? Now watch what happens when we go and think of another base. Bink. So in binary, it's exactly the same idea. I'm going to give you a number. 1101 one, one in binary. And you say, what does this mean? Is, this, is that, is that 1101? Well, it would be if that were interpreted as base 10. But if it's interpreted in binary, then, and by the way, the way we usually indicate that is by saying 0b in front of that, or sub 2 in the bottom right, as you see there. So 1101, one, one, what does that mean? Well, the, each of the columns, rather than being, let's go from the, the leftmost column, 1, 10, hundreds, and a thousands, Remember, you got that because it was the base to the power. So base 2 now to the power 0 is 2 to the 0 is 1. So this is the 1's column. That's the guy on the far side. Then over a little bit is 2 to the 1, the 2's column. 2 to the 2 is the 4's column, and 2 to the 3 is the 8's column. Okay? So now you have the same idea, this coefficient 1, 1, 0, 1, times each of those values. So it, if you look from the left to the right, you'll see 1 times 2 to the 3, which is an 8. 1 times 2 to the 4, that's 1 times 4 is 4. 0 times 2 to the 1, so that's, there's no 2 in there. And 1 times 2 to the 0, so that's a 1. So that's, you're adding an 8 and a 4, that's 12, plus 1 is 13. So 1101 one, one in binary is 13. Pretty cool, right? OK, so now let's go to the next one. Hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is base 16. And base 16 is a little bit more complicated because rather than, we only know about 10 decimal digits to represent numbers. But hexadecimal has 16 of those. So what we do is we get some letters. Isn't that great? So once you get to 10, we have 9 is 9, 8 is 8, all the way down to 0. Once you get to 10, you go to A. Oh, I get it, A. So 10 in hexadecimal is A, 11 is B, and all the way up to F, which is 15. Okay, so it's 0 through 15 in one hexadecimal digit. So if I say, what's A5 in hexadecimal? Okay, let's think about it. A5. Well, so let's, let's start quietly. Same exact, same exact idea. So there's columns. The, the left, the rightmost column is 16, base 16 to the 0, or the 1's column. Basically, it's always going to be the 1's column on the right. The next one is base to the 1. 16 to the 1, there's that much math, that's just 16. So I have the 16's column and the 1's column. Now, what do I have for my coefficients? A is 10. So 10 times 16 to the 1, or 16, 10 times 16, I made the numbers easy for you, 160. 5 times 16 to the 0 is 5 times 1, or 5. So 160 plus 5 is 165. A hexadecimal. So now you now know how to convert binary digits to a decimal number and hexadecimal digits to a decimal number. That's pretty cool. Later on in another video, we'll show you how to do the opposite of that. So let me just show you in summary what we've learned so far. So 
one of the things that you're going to see is binary numbers can represent many things. And one of them they can represent is light switches. Uh, look around your house and figure out how many lights you have. And whether any of those are burned out or not can be a binary digit. Zero might mean good, and one might be burned out. Or you could reverse it. You can actually use abstraction to have you know, one means it can go on, and zero means it's off. So maybe you can, rather than burn out, you can also have encode whether they're on or off or not. And you can watch how they change as you walk through the house and turn lights on and turns off. So each one of those bits can have two states. And if you think about them, this, they're independent. This one can have two states. This one can have two states. And this one can have two states. So each of these guys can be one of two things. Two things. So the total number of combinations is 2 times 2 times 2. If I have 3 bits, and that's 8. If I have 4 bits, I have 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that means 4 bits can represent all zeros to all ones. And all the way on the right, you see a chart. And that chart is showing you all zeros at the top to all ones. And I'm trying to connect with you the very common chart people have seen, which is decimal on the left, hexadecimal in the middle column, and then binary in the right. And that you can just basically have that chart as a carry, cut it out of your handout and kind of bring it with you. If you ever need to be able to convert something within 0 to 15, you can do that conversion. So with four bits, by the way, I'll skip to the second bullet, third bullet, which is that in computer science, we often take eight of these together and carry around them. And those eight, we actually call a byte, B-Y-T-E. And if you go to the bullet above it, it says that four bits, so eight bits is a byte. Well, what's half of that? What's half of a byte? A nibble. So you get a nibble because you're not fully biting. OK, anyway, as a, it's just we computer scientists love this kind of humor. And the point is, you're just taking a small snack, and that's a, I, I said, what's two bits? Is that, is that a, you know, a taste, a, a smell? I don't know. So the idea is you're going to have eight bits for the byte, four bits for the nibble. One hex digit is four bits, and that's 16 possible options. So you see that in the column to the right. Two of them, so two hex digits is now a total of eight. Two to the eight, which are that first equation, is 256. So with a byte, I can represent 256 different things, usually numbered from 0 to 255. The convenient thing is we also use that for colors. So colors on most computer systems are 24 bits of color. And what that really means is I have 8 bits allocated for red, 8 bits for green, and 8 bits for blue. And each of those, col each of those different colors are numbers from 0 to 255. So in, in particular, here's a color. And uh, as we share this on the web, people want to encode the website. I want to have the background color. And the color you specify actually using hexadecimal. So now you're kind of connected. Oh, I always wanted to change the background of my web page. Now you know how to do it. So use pound sign to indicate that after this is going to be some hexadecimal guide. This is on the web. And you might have 4A, and that indicates some color in red, and FF, which is maximal green. And I have 00, zero which is no blue. And you actually get that color there on the right. So it's kind of neat that that color is mostly what you get. And in summary, that is a use of, an actual embedded use of binary and hexadecimal digits in an application you might want to use in the future. So in summary, you've now seen decimal and binary and hexadecimal, how to go from decimal to those guys. And later videos, you'll be able to go from binary and hexadecimal back to decimal. Thanks again.